Okay, so uh, good afternoon if you've just joined us. There's just a few more people just uh, entering um, and then we, we can begin. So just a very, very warm welcome to Heathcote. Um, and it's such a shame that a lot of you won't be able to come in in person and join us at interview and have a, a look round. But just to remind you, if you are interested in, in visiting our sixth form, uh, we do have tours of the building available, um, which are happening after school on Mondays and Thursdays, and you can book those on Eventbrite. So hopefully that will give you a chance if you haven't had a chance to come and see us to do so in person um, and be able to, to meet our team. So just a warm welcome. If you've got any questions, if you pop those in the chat just to start with, um, and hopefully that will keep everyone on mute and it will help us running things smoothly. So just to follow up on our introduction, because you can't come in person, I'm just going to start with a very uh, brief video clip. Uh, you may have had a chance to see it as part of our open evening. Uh, so apologies if you've seen this before, but just giving you a flavour of what our six forms like uh, and some of the kind of classes and courses that we're offering to hopefully remind you, hopefully why you've chosen to apply to us. So we'll start with just a very quick uh, video. So hopefully that <clears throat> the sound uh, quality was okay and you were able to uh, share the video and the visuals of some of the aspects of our learning areas, our uh, wonderful students and the courses uh, that we offer and some of the achievements and some of the destinations uh, that they go on to. So just to echo that, I'm going to just spend a few minutes just sharing with you the things that I'm really proud of about Heathcote Sixth Form and the things that I hope that you would look forward to if you were to join us in September. So uh, last year we had some outstanding individual achievements. Uh, you can see there from the, the large number of A stars from those particular individuals who are either on gap years or at university this year. I'm also on our BTEC courses, so achieving D star DD, that's the equivalent of A star AA at A level. And you can see a large number of our highest achieving BTEC students too, who are also at Russell Group Universities um, and are seeking apprenticeships and in, in the world of work already. 
On top of that, we were able to support two students with a Reading Foundation scholarship and they were awarded £250 each to really show that we have a culture of celebrating success. And that no matter what your starting point, no matter the course or the pathway that you're on, we hope that you can all be successful at Heathcote Sixth Form. And you can see some other headline measures there. And obviously last year was a slightly different year as this year is in terms of our overall grades. Um, but hopefully that shows you where we're aiming to be continuing both uh, this year with our teacher assess grades, but also that our students can be at succeeding at the highest level. And I think it's important that that's not just our judgment, but that's been reflected by 40% of our university destinations were at the top tier. So this isn't just something saying that we, we've got really strong grades, but the university applications and those admissions tutors at the best universities in the country are also recognising that Heathcote Six Formers can go on to really, really successful destinations. And you can see from our 2018 Ofsted report, we've got a short quote. Um, I'm really building on that this year where we currently stand with our 2021 offers. We are really proud that we've got four Oxbridge candidates this year with successful offers so far. One offer for medicine and 99% of all of our university applicants already have offers. We've just got one uh, student who hasn't yet got an offer and that's because they're changing their chosen course. Uh, and once they've applied for their new course, I'm very, very confident that we'll have a 100% success rate so that everybody who applies to university will go on and secure a destination, which I'm sure for all of you thinking about your next steps and what you want from a sixth form is to know that it will be a stepping stone to a positive future. Uh, and I haven't got the information here yet for this year's cohort for apprenticeships, but we know lots of our students are also going on to consider their next steps in the world of work too, despite the disruption, obviously, of the pandemic and COVID in securing some of those face-to-face -face opportunities. On top of that, I think it's really important uh, before you come for interview, and I'll give you some more details on that in a moment, is to think about what sixth form life is like and what you might want to get out of your time in sixth form, um, not just a kind of certificate of grades and a, a destination, but also what we offer in terms of our community. Uh, and I think community is a word I would use to really echo uh, our building. If you've had a chance to visit us, we've got our own sixth form centre. And I think we really do have within the school a sense of community as a sixth form. Um, <clears throat> we've got our own building, our own facilities uh, as a part of the school. And we, we support our wider school community through fundraising events and charitable programmes and some mentoring. But also within our own building, we have a, a really supportive community of tutors, of support staff. We have our own reception team. Uh, Miss Lewis is head of year 12 and 13. Who really do create a sense of, of well-being and listening so it takes us around to the next slide on the left that we have a uh, counsellor we have gym club we have enrichment opportunities um i think there was a pre-submitted question around what trips we run um we do have a duke of edinburgh program we work with uh, the national citizen service previously we've run trips to geneva to the cern center in science uh, we did have a trip to poland lined up which unfortunately has been put on hold due to, to travel restrictions nationally uh, and globally, of course, with the pandemic, but it is something we're really keen to get up and running again with international trips within departments and across the sixth form as well. Um, close at home, we run trips to Thorpe Park uh, and other rewards trips um, and looking at ways we can sort of celebrate success throughout the year, not just as, as big, expensive overseas projects. So we look at kind of mixing those things. You'd have a chance to develop if you come to Heath Sixth Form uh, leadership opportunity. We've got a, a pupil ambassador scheme, uh, head boy, head girl, but also ambassadors in different areas across the school and across different subjects. So that would be something we'd hope that you would be involved in. Uh, and you might have seen in, in the video, we've got a, a debate club and we've run a successful bar mock trial where people have gone to the Snaresbrook Crown Court to present their case. Uh, we link with lots and lots of universities. We've got a partnership with Leicester and they offer uh, a successful applicant £2,000 a year for choosing Leicester University because they come from Heathcote um, and lots of other supportive schemes like the Sutton Trust and the Social Mobility Foundation too. So looking at really supporting those skills of curiosity, inquiry and communication. And finally, that last one, we've got a brand new medical society uh, being led by our year 12 students who are looking at supporting applications for medicine and STEM subjects. Uh, we've got the extended project to, to help uh, act as an additional AS qualification in a subject of your choice uh, and lots and lots of partnerships for careers and so on. And making sure that everyone, no matter what their chosen pathway is, that you, you have high ambitions and high aspirations. So hopefully that gives you a sense that actually coming to this sixth form isn't just about securing those top grades, it's also about developing a kind of happy and successful, well-rounded person. 
So just to give you some examples on that, not just saying that we do these things, um, these are some examples of the partnerships that we work with. So at this moment in time, if you are in year 12, we've got 38 different work experiences opportunities currently live. So that's with lots of different employers and lots of different networks. Uh, with our partnership called Uptree. Uh, we've got Google Classroom, which is our online learning platform uh, where we regularly post opportunities, which is clearly signposted. We also have a weekly tutorial program uh, where we cover lots of things to, to do with well-being and um, life skills and, and lots of aspects like that and study skills, but also thinking about employability. Um, we've got really strong links with the University of Cambridge, Leicester University, employers like Gardner and Theobald, Teach First, who give paid work experience opportunities as well. And um, we're trying to um, make sure that as the pandemic allows, we can get back to our pledge that all year 12 pupils will have a, a work experience opportunity in, uh, in July. So that gives you a flavour of the, the extra things that we can offer you. Um, on top of that, um, we think it's really important that, as mentioned on the previous slides, we've got these partnerships and enrichment opportunities, which I can give you a second just to look through some of the list here on those bullet points. So, um, I don't want to keep you guys for too long. Um, as I said, I'm aiming for around 15 to 20 minutes. So this last section really is a chance about what comes next in terms of your application. So thank you for taking the time to apply and, and for being here to find out a little bit more. Um, I just want to remind you that we do have academic entrance requirements for our different pathways. So if you are hoping to join us on a full A-level course, you're going to need a minimum of five grade fives, and that includes English and maths at GCSE. But we do also have on top of that some individual subject requirements so for example if you're looking to study maths at a level we would be looking at a grade seven uh, something like a history or english you would need a six for those sociology or the humanities subjects you're going to need a six in the subject of choice sometimes we will be flexible and we will consider a high grade five uh, if there are certain circumstances but really our benchmark is five grade fives plus english and maths uh, and particular individual subject requirements if you're considering a mixed A-level and BTEC pathway, we're only offering that in a limited number of subject areas. So we run that hopefully next year in um, BTEC business with our PCP course. And um, we're gonna look once we've completed our applications just to see how we can timetable other courses. So that might be something we need to follow up with you in, in your interview about what your combinations might be. But again, because you're doing an A-level pathway, you're gonna need uh, English and maths uh, grade uh, four for those, you're gonna need to pass those. Our two main level three extended diplomas in BTEC are BTEC Business and BTEC Sport, and they are the equivalent of three full A-levels with us. We do the extended diploma. So if you do BTEC Business or BTEC Sport, that is your full timetable, uh, and that would be the equivalent of three A-level subjects, and you will need five grade fours for that option. And then finally, at level two, we offer a city and guilds qualification in construction, and that's a part-time course. It's run over three days. Um, and it will give you an opportunity to perhaps retake English and maths uh, and to have a look at getting some practical work experience alongside. It's a really hands on vocational qualification uh, that runs Monday to Wednesday. So that's just a refresher of, of what you will need to commit to. And in terms of what happens is obviously you may have completed some mock assessments and some exams. You might not know your final grades yet, as nobody does. So you'll be given a conditional offer. So after your interview, if you are likely to be on track to meet those entrance requirements, we will offer you something called a conditional offer that says on results day in August, you will need to confirm whether you've met those entrance requirements or whether we need to amend your offer um, for enrolment in August. Uh, and that will come out after the interview conversation has happened. So you'll receive an email through the online admissions platform uh, shortly after your interview, confirming the discussions you've had and what pathway we think you are on track to be suitable for. And that'll be based on information you provide us at interview, but also on your reference that we have received from your school and your school's most recent predicted grades. Obviously, they are predicted at this stage, so you will still have a chance to go on and improve those grades um, and confirm them later in August. So what to expect uh, at interview, either tomorrow or next week, or if we need to make any individual arrangements. So you will get a phone call within the allocated time slot from a teacher or a senior member of our leadership team. Um, and as much as possible, we've allocated those uh, teachers to areas that you have applied for. So if you've applied for biology, chemistry and maths, we will try and put you with a teacher who teaches one of those A-level subjects so they can ask you some questions about your suitability and look at your predicted grades. 
we've already in most cases got your reference so it may be worth thinking about well how would your teachers describe you we will know your attendance data we'll know your effort your attitude and we'll have an idea of your predicted grades so we might ask you well when was this data from are these uh, predicted grades from last november or are they from last week and you might say no no i've done a recent mock and my new grade is higher and you can give us a clue as to uh, where you think your suitability might be um, so be prepared to think about what we, what we will know on our application and what maybe has changed since you applied to us uh, even a few weeks and months ago, because obviously with the assessment picture, things change very, very quickly. So you may, be, uh, you may be asked to kind of update us on particularly on the grades and say where you think things are likely to be, whether you've changed from a foundation to a higher paper or something like that might be a really helpful thing to consider. And you'll also be asked to consider what you'd contribute. So some of the things I've talked about today, about what we offer, about the mentoring, about the, the community, about looking uh, to play an active role as a member of the sixth form. Uh, we are part of a, a sixth form attached to a school. We're not a college. So being prepared to consider what you would uh, do to contribute to our environment here, what your aspirations might be, and how you think you'd be a valued member for us, as well as what we can offer to you. And you'll also be asked to consider whether Heathcote is your first choice. Um, and that question really is designed to help us plan and timetable um, so that we have the best possible idea of what is a realistic set of numbers we want to make sure we can offer all the courses that you've applied to. But obviously, if we have uh, very, very low numbers in certain areas, then we might not be able to run every course. So getting an idea of whether we're your first choice will really help us to plan and make sure we can prepare uh, for next year for everybody. And I'm just going to close with the, the these are the pre-submitted um, questions and I may have covered some of that ground already. So what school trips do you do? It does depend a little bit on subject. Um, so I've mentioned CERN and Geneva. We had a social sciences trip planned for Poland. We do whole year group trips to places like Thorpe Park or to the cinema for rewards. Um, so that really depends. Our aim for class sizes is, is around 12, uh, 12 per class. Some are much uh, bigger than that we have sort of up to about 20 um, and some a little bit smaller if it gets to a course of probably below five that's when we start saying we may or may not be able to run the course it becomes much less viable in terms of timetable so we aim to have an average of around about 12 would be our ambition some smaller some bigger um, the condition offers will be made after interview so once you've had your interview you should receive uh, an email confirming your offer status uh, within the next day or two after interview unless there's any particular follow-up that we need to do and once we've got our references in um, and I guess that third question is uh, linking to which A-level subjects we, we've timetabled on, on the basis of everything that we've offered so as it stands we're not planning on taking away anything unless uh, the the um, demand changes from our interview process in which case you would get an individual phone call to talk through what alternative subjects you might do and what plan b then there may be in those very very small number of cases so that's the, the kind of final uh, piece of information that I'm, I'm going to share with you um, and i'll just leave the chat open in case anyone has any particular questions that they want to share otherwise i will draw the meeting to a close wish you the best of luck for your interview and for your condition offers and obviously for all the hard work that you're still yet to do between now uh, and those final submissions of the teacher assessed grades. And we really hope that as many of you as possible will be joining us in September. Thank you. So somebody's just asked, how will you know when the phone interview will take place? You should have received um, an email from our online admissions application, um, which will give you a time slot. If you haven't, and you've got any questions about that, um, if you can just you put a direct message, I don't have your surname. Uh, so if you could just put your surname, I can make sure that we can double check that communication with you. Perfect. I'll make a note of that and I'll get back to you, uh, Joshua, and make sure we can uh, make sure you've got the information that you need.
Um, somebody's asked when you can visit the school um, and we have uh, got Eventbrite is our system that we're using for booking those just obviously make sure we're COVID secure in terms of not everyone turning up at once. The uh, tours are happening on a Monday and a Thursday after school so I can make sure that with this uh, presentation you get the link to booking on Eventbrite. I believe it's on our website homepage. So if you go to the school website there should be a yellow box. I think it's still there. It was before Easter where you can book via Eventbrite to visit the school. So if you're looking to do full A-levels, um, you have eight subjects, you would need at least, a five, that's correct, uh, so just in five subjects. So um, you don't need uh, above a grade five in all eight, although that would be great, uh, but you're looking for five subjects, and in particular, the subjects that you're looking to study next year. So we want your best grades to match the subjects that you're hoping to go on to, so that we can be confident that you're going to be um, successful um, at a level we're not setting you up to do courses that you're struggling so you're looking at five grade fives um, so the, the five subjects Okay, so I, I think most people have left the meeting. If there's anyone else with any further questions, I'll give you just another minute before I say farewell and good luck one more time to you all. So I'll just give you a further minute. If you've got anything uh, on the chat, now is your chance to do so before I close the meeting. Okay, I don't think there are any further questions. So thank you very much for your time uh, this afternoon. I really appreciate it. Best of luck for your interviews next week and for the work that you still have to do ahead. And we look forward to hopefully many of you joining us at the sixth form here.